All right, I'm actually doing this again. This is my second attempt. Previously, I, I had all these extra little uh, examples and stories that I wanted to add. I talked about uh, a couple of these Roman battles of, of ground being lost and strategic retreat. But I think, I think people already understand what that means. Uh, just at the top of my head now, if you've read The Lord of the Rings or just seen the movie in the final act, uh, a big part of that is protecting this big white city. And, and to lose that would be kind of to lose everything. And they have this other uh, kind of port along a river called Osgiliath that is uh, a, a little ways off. And it was supposed to be this stronghold not to lose. And when the steward who is there in the king's place finds out that is lost, he is furious with his son and sends him back there to regain this ground that is already lost. It's it's not going to be it's not going to be retaken. And and so it, it would be just a suicide attempt. And it does kind of remind you a little bit of what's going on here. When the church put out this statement this this last week, it confused a lot of people. It uh, threw a lot of people that were for the church or a against the church, kind of it, it threw them off a little bit and, and got some wrong ideas out there. And it didn't help that these news articles that came out kind of didn't grab the essence of what was going on. So I wanted to just talk about that here. But basically, uh, a lot of these news articles are basically saying, look what the church has done. Now they support gay marriage or they support this gay marriage bill. So like, look, uh, Mormon church backs same-sex marriage law, maintains the relationships still sinful. Mormon church announces support for same-sex marriage bill. LDS church comes out in support of federal law protecting same-sex marriage. But that is not it. That is not it. So I wanted to go to the actual statement. I mean, it is it, but it doesn't grab the essence, like I said. Now, here's the statement here. Uh, the statement on the United States Congress Respect for Marriage Act, put out by the, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints newsroom. The doctrine of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints related to marriage between a man and a woman is well known and will remain unchanged. We are grateful for the continuing efforts of those who can, who work to ensure the Respect for Marriage Act includes appropriate religious freedom protections. And, and that's the key. While respecting the law and preserving the rights of our LGBTQ brothers and sisters, we believe this approach is the way forward as we work together to preserve the principles and practices of religious freedom together with the rights of LGBTQ individuals. Much can be accomplished to heal relationships and foster greater understanding. It's kind of two parts. Uh, the first part, which I think it's really driving home, is making sure that this, this act includes appropriate religious freedom protections while respecting the law and preserving the rights of our LGBTQ brothers and sisters. Now, so, in 1995, the church put out this statement, really well known, widely distributed to governments and elsewhere. It was read in 1995 by Gordon B. Hinckley in the Relief Society, uh, the General Relief Society meeting. And I'm not going to go through all of it, uh, but just this first part here and, and the warning at the end. We, the First Presidency, and the Council of the Twelve Apostles of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints solemnly proclaim that marriage between a man and a woman is ordained of God, and that the family is central to the Creator's plan for the eternal destiny of His children. And it, it goes through, it goes through all of, uh, goes through kind of defining that. But at the end, we warn that individuals who violate covenants of chastity, who abuse uh, spouse or offspring, 
who fail to fulfill re family responsibilities will one day stand accountable before God. Further, we warn, and it's, it's this statement here that kind of speaks a little bit to this bill. Well, really speaks to this bill. Further, we warn that the disintegration of the family will bring upon individuals, communities, and nations uh, the calamities foretold by ancient and modern prophets. We call upon responsible citizens and officers of government everywhere to promote these measures designed to maintain and strengthen the family as the fundamental unit of society. Now, uh, culturally, we know that certainly since 1995, uh, there has been ground lost, a lot of ground being lost. So when they stuck their flag in, in 1995, uh, even though that flag is still in that spot where they put it, uh, it it's here, and and the church has been backed up uh, f far away from there. We know that a lot of people, both within the church and out of the church, are very much against uh, the idea that the family as an institution between a man and a wife is ordained of God and central, uh, not even, and not even that it's only ordained of God, that this is the foundational unit that a society is to, to build on. Individuals, communities, and, and even nations, that this foundational unit of a family uh, uh, with the man and the woman married and, and the children underneath, that this is the foundational unit. We know that culturally, that has been lost. So when they put out a statement like this, you know, in 2008, there, we had the whole thing with the Prop 8 uh, situation and that caused a lot of heartache for a lot of people in and out of the church. Uh, and people were very upset about that. So within the church, we also have these articles of faith. And if we go to 11, we claim the privilege of worshiping Almighty God according to the dictates of our own conscience. And allow all men the same privilege. Let them worship how, where, or what they may. Uh, so we claim that privilege, but also we live in a, a society where we, we also want to give that same pri privilege to everyone. Everyone gets to cast their vote. In 2008, even though culturally uh, we were trying to affect that, that vote and try to make people agree with that same thing over time uh, a lot of that ground has absolutely been lost so if this bill was going to go forward anyway uh, what this is working towards is making sure that even though that ground is lost that fundamental thing that really means a lot really means everything to the church and not only to our church but to other churches as well this religious freedom is the hill to die on, really the fundamental core of it all. Uh, by no small uh, coincidence would it have the temple behind it. This temple. Whoop. The Salt Lake Temple, among other temples, is, is very important to us. These are mountains, hills to die on. Uh, the, the mountains are very important in the scriptures, and these are areas of sacred space. These ordinances within the temples, within this sacred space, cannot be, uh, uh, we cannot have governments swaying what happens within these temples. This is where men and women are being sealed together, and this, this, fundamental unit this proclamation is not going to change culturally we can only do what we can do but we have to also fight for people's uh you know we we know that people also get to vote according to the dictates of their conscience now isn't it interesting that in a time where uh Really, culturally, we are kind of backed up against this. All, all That ground has been lost, but almost as if we knew that was going to happen or the Lord knew that was going to happen, we have this warning that if it does happen, 
we'll have these results. But isn't it interesting that we have Elder Oaks in the position that he is in at the time that we are in? I don't think that is by any... Uh, I don't think that is by mistake. So I, I wanted to put this out there. This protections of the temple, if we're going to lose ground anyway, it is about protecting that religious freedom fundamentally. Other people may choose to do things in other ways, and, and we cannot really change that. We can, we can try to influence how people vote by by proclaiming what we feel is right but ultimately if people are going to go another way it has to be protections on our temples that is is the hill the hill to die on and i i believe it is and i think that this is only kind of the beginning but i hope that this bill for the people in the united states does does help with that um even though it, it does have some things that obviously go against what the Kurt, what the church fundamentally does believe. So there are probably a whole bunch of other things out there that you can go to to see some of the details on this, but I thought this was interesting uh, to look into, and it has a lot of people kind of saying other things about it. I, I think fundamentally this is what the church is interested in, uh, this is what the church is interested in really protecting here. But uh, what do you think?